eat be wet tonight we have the french grand prix here for tier one of course on a monday uh, very exciting stuff we're gonna have mounds in the party very soon um just taking a couple of minutes to join hopefully we'll have no internet connection issues like we did exactly last week we should be fine i'm just going back to the party one more time you should join and then we should get underway here for the stb racing league as you know, it is a sprint. So we're going straight into a one-shot qualifying rather than a short qualifying. And we'll see what happens. So what is the circuit of Paul Ricard? What does it consist of? Well, it's got 15 turns, a 5.841 kilometre track. The race distance for a half race, which is what we do in STB, is 154.845 kilometers. Maldi is inside the party, and I'm assuming he's included his audio. So, hello Maldi, how are you doing today? Um, hello, Pistol, yeah. Um, I'm good, I'm good. Uh, you started streaming a bit earlier, so that's all good. It is one shot qualifying, of course. It's another sprint race, uh, Pistol. Um, I love it because it's like sprint races. Um, I like them on the waiting stage when it's T3 because so I can race in them, but when it's uh commentating, you've got to really be in that in that right mindset to really get straight into the action. But we are here in France, Pistol. This is going to be the final ever French Grand Prix at Paul Ricard uh, for the foreseeable future. Um, from what we know already, we don't, I don't think Paul Ricard's going to win the game next year. So um, this track has got a very special place in my heart pistol for how many great races there has been at Paul Ricard. Um, so I am just really excited for this race, but also a sprint race as well. Some people were like, why have you got France a sprint race? Hopefully tonight proves that France is a good overtaking circuit. Um, but yeah, we are straight on the action now, so if you want to go through the qualifying, um, I will. here in France. So here we go, Stefan so far is up top, but quickly it shifts going into the first turn and so far on the exit of the second turn, Ali Ferrari is up top, but that swiftly switches over to Jose Manuel, who is at top right now. Scrack though, is able to get himself at the top there, battling it out for P1 here in this one shot qualifying to try and go over into the sprint race and try and get, of course, the best position possible. Scrack has fallen straight down into P8 whilst Attila moves up into P1. Hugo Rodriguez did very well last time out, can he do the exact same here up top is Stefan once more the second time he has been into on top of that spot for P1 Attila is just behind going into the chicane now who's brave on the brakes who's better on the exit questions flung up answers being shot down Stefan so far is still keeping his poor position through this one shot qualifying session can he do himself justice here we go coming into the right hander now going into that long progressive right hander which is so tricky to try and master uh, so Stefan is still and still up top, Attila still, and still P2. Here is Stefan, he's on our screens right now, onto the exit, he's still in P1, into the last few turns of the French Grand Prix. Can he get P1 going into the sprint race? Last turn! Swift C score around, but Attila's took the top spot on the final turn on the exit! Is it P1 for Attila? It is! Attila, 130 dead. And he will go up, will start up, start up top, going into the sprint race. Yes, uh, so let me just sort out the volume of the game. Yes, semi cap very uh, interesting stuff, uh, Pistol. I don't know if you can see the standings, but we have got semi K and V three at the moment, and Boas did actually get disqualified from the uh, the the qualifying so it's very now important for Bubbers to pick up as many positions as possible still is on pole position second is Fango third is Semike fourth is Polyakov fifth is Mafio sixth is Rafi uh seventh is Escrack eighth is Jose Manuel ninth is Hugo Rodriguez tenth is no sense eleventh Adam twelfth Ali thirteenth Shadrin fourteenth SK and then it's uh Cookin, Joey and Bowers that's absolutely crucial for the World Championship Pistol, I believe the gap is 22 points between Sem and um, uh, Bowers in the Championship. It's actually 21. So. Oh, even better for them then. Yeah. 
So, so okay, I mean, right at the start of the season, Boas did have quite a big gap, actually, over towards the men behind. But now it's kind of shrunk. And actually, it's becoming progressively an uh, even more exciting and interesting battle for the championship as the rounds go on, which is what we expect, really. Uh, not only in STB, but in just... These, these drivers in of itself. But here we go. We have a mere 20 seconds away from the start of the sprint race here in Tier 1 on a Monday. You can catch us next week on a Monday, by the way. Mondays, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, all the days. We like to stream. We like to show you all of our drivers. Go out on track. You'll see the best out of those lot on track right now as we are learning into the sprint race. Here Hopefully there's got no glitches, um, there was last week, there was a few glitches um, last week, so hopefully there is none. So here we go This then, week we are getting going in France. Five red lights. Green light, go, go, go. Here in France, the sprint race in STB at so far. Attila is still keeping his P1 going down into the first turn in the French Grand Prix. He's still keeping that P1. He's two tenths now. He's built up a nice little gap to Stefan in P2. Semi K, there's yeah, a flag to the background. People going side by side. Matthews in the back two. of the grid. He's got Matthews in the back of the grid. Whilst Hugo Rodriguez is going side by side with Jose Manuel, Matthew back in the grid, like you've smartly pointed out. You can see Adam Hunlow going side by side, action at the back. Look at this, I'm going this round into a wall. I think that's uh, Joey. Joey is, and now there's a McLaren on that's Adam Hunlow. And Matthew is able to pick up three positions here from the back of the grid. Seneca is getting extremely close here to German Polyakov. Can he go for a move going down into the chicane? Well, Hugo Rodriguez thought about looking for a move down into the chicane, but backs out of it. Onto the exit. Is he going to get close enough for a move into the right hand? And no, he isn't. Semi K so close here to the Ferrari. The Red Bull versus the Ferrari into the right hand. There they go. The Red Bull and the Ferrari make a tiny bit of contact, at least on my screen they did. Into another right hand. There they go. Semi K versus Polyakov here in the sprint race. It's all over. And it seems a. And it's the Franco's earth. It's on the curb. He's planning on the curb. Sem's up to P2. It's a Red Bull 1 2 in this sprint race. Matthew's up to P14 now. There's a match going on this people. We've got Rapidly. Double side with Just Emmanuel as they come through the final sector. Please, well, this is action, action, action. This is why. And Ali Ferrari has lost his front wing as well. And Rappi has lost his back end. He's also spun. Spins everywhere on the track in this sprint race. What is going on here in France? Ali I Ferrari told you. I told you France is not a boring track. I told you, Pistol. Scrap <laughs> as a three second time penalty here, very early on into the sprint race. Not what you want to see. But Semi K, that start was crucial from him. Crooked is now falling down the order. He's also spun. Spam. So many cars. Like they're, they're dropping down like flies. Yeah, Pistol. Like Sorry, weather. it's actually very difficult to um, obviously keep the car on the track around the circuit. There's a lot, it's very traction. Dominated. You've got to be really smooth on the throttle around this circuit. It's very hard not to spin or make a mistake. So these drivers are really, you know, uh, struggling with that back end um, here in France. Um, apparently, an error has occurred. What was that for your screen? No, I'm watching the stream. It's fine. No, that was my yeah. fault. But yes, yeah, Sammy's actually catching Attila. He's got quite low wings as well, uh, this still, so that could well be happening as well. Um, there is slight lag on my screen, um, but yeah, the stream is working all well at the moment, Pistol. And now it's a case of these drivers keeping that DRS. We're going to really see some interesting battles coming up now, Pistol, uh, with this DRS enabled. And Attila could well be seeing the up down uh, pitch rate. Well, I don't think necessarily this is a problem for the Red Bulls. Currently, they are P1 inside of the championship standings in the constructors. This is a very key sprint race to set the tone going into, of course, the, uh, I want to say, 30 or so laps around uh, France. So we'll see what happens. DRS is now enabled, finally. And when you go um, into that, that chicane, later on, down that massive straight, it's very easy. Oh, it's very easy to get your car around and, and, and spin. And that's just what the Alpine of uh, Shadowing. That's just done. Yeah, Shadrin spam. Yeah, you he, usually tier two, but he said he's um quite good at France. So I don't know if that was a little lie, but I'm glad that he's with us this evening racing in in um. Well, Hugo Rodriguez getting very close support. here to Scrack, and it looks like he doesn't even need the chicane to go for the overtake or or keep the overtake. 
Hugo Rodriguez has got past the Ferrari, but still the Ferrari is uh, sniffing up that gearbox. But I don't think he's close enough to look for another move on that Mercedes. He's got an overtake. But Semike is still so close to... Yeah, it. Stem's it's close as well, Pistol. Sorry, yeah. Stem's getting yeah. close, yeah. Super, super close, these two are. And of course, Semike has used a lot of his ERS to try and get even into this position. Um, so maybe his, his reign at P1 if he is to get it in the sprint race won't last too long. Maybe it'll last a lap or two, depending on, on how he uses his ERS from now on. Uh, Scrack and Hugo Rodriguez. Oh, going Pistol, sorry, we've got uh, Crack and Hugo Rodriguez coming through the final corner now. This is going to get a good little battle. We've got him, then we've got Jose Manuel, then we've got No Sense, who's uh, ahead of C. Bowen. So Bowen has picked up, he's now getting a point from this race. That is crucial. He's to pick up as many points as possible, Pistol, in this Here race. Here comes Hugo Rodriguez, super close into the Ferrari. They're side by side going into the first turn of the Paul Ricard circuit. Side by side onto the exit of turn two. Wheel to wheel action. Each inches between the two of them, depending on who's P4, who's P5. Hugo Rodriguez, Bayer on the brakes. Rides the curb on the inside. That inside line proven to be really successful in terms of... Oh, the position. He has to mind on the inside of the horse. That was very, very crazy stuff there. And now Steve Bowers is trying to get the mix on around the outside. You can just see right here, see Bowers. Now look at the speed he's got. He, he's being boxed in, boxed in like a fish. They're side by side, both Jose and Manuel. And no sense, just up ahead, you can see the Ferrari and the Mercedes going side by side. And here comes Bowers, round the outside he goes. Of, I think that was Jose Manuel, I'm not too sure. Uh, no, it was Stefan actually. Stefan had an awful exit. Seems like people are falling down the order. You can see Hugo Rodriguez could be looking for him. He is a Oh no! And crack is into a wall. He's cracked his front wing into the wall. And that's going to bring out a safety car. Or oh, I think it's just a VSC. <sighs> Bloody hell. Yeah, it's very action-packed uh, pistol here in France. So he always is for STB anyway. Um, yeah, that was crazy stuff. Crazy things here in France. Is a virtual safety car. And I think no sense going to be in the pits as well. It's my view of Simon because he's got two penalties. Yeah, no sense um, got a penalty. Oh, we're back racing again. It's yeah, we're back racing. Great flags. And you can just see that massive gap now between uh, Poliakov, Semike, and Attila to Hugo Rodriguez. It's massive. Speaking of a gap and between uh, certain cars, Semike and Attila are super, super close to each other. The two rebels have been going at it for. A long, long time. But also looking into the midfield, you've also got Sebo is getting very close up to the back of Jose Manuel. Uh, onto the exit, going down into the chicane very shortly. You can see it's in a, it just doesn't, it doesn't use any DRS. ERS, sorry. It doesn't even need to. Because just the exit speed he has, maybe just it, maybe it's higher wings. Uh, he just he's just able to just sit ahead of Semike, and Semike pushes through the corners, and that's the only place where he's actually gaining the time. He's not necessarily getting it down any straights, which is the really key thing about Paul Ricard. Uh, anything to comment on the race so far, Maldi? It's just been what I expected. Just some great racing, a few collisions here and there, but all in all, Pistol, I think you can probably say it's just been more entertaining than Austria last week. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's only been sprint racing. We're going to go into the... Um, 30 or so laps very shortly and then what happens there um so Boris is still extremely close here to Jose Manuel um yeah it's going to be um difficult though pistol for him to get past because uh Manuel's going to have the DRS on Rodriguez so that's going to also take him along but Sam needs to get a move on here if he wants to get these full eight points in his sprint race I think he might be trying to save up some ERS as well as Attila if you're Attila, do you think just to let him go by and, and just kind of allow him to get the extra... No, because if you look at the point. championship pistol, Attila's actually in the battle as well. So this is a good race for him to return to to try and get some points over these guys. But Sam has definitely got, I would say, a better pace than his teammate. Three second time penalty for Matthew as he sits into P9. He's not doing particularly well in this one so far. He's the back of the grid. He's climbed the order, yes, but that three second time penalty kind of integrates the meaning of coming back up the order as he's just probably going to fall back down. Semi K getting close to Attila has been for all of this sprint race really. Uh, six laps out of nine. Three laps left to go. Can Semi K get the crucial overtake on Attila? 
we will find out very shortly. Right, Rodriguez has used a lot of ERS this so, so he might be a sitting thing up here to his esports teammate Manuel. And then you've got Burbers as well. So at the moment, Burbers is getting three points in this sprint. No, he's not. He's getting two. He's getting four, sorry, because Rodriguez has got a penalty. Indeed he does, and that's definitely going to affect his race as well. I mean, he's not necessarily done awful, but you know, any time penalty is, 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 is awful to a driver's race. I mean, I do the same thing needs to burn out his your rest on either the eighth lap or this lap, because as, as it is, just a tailor's quicker, and... He's really got to try and defeat that using that ERS. And look at Jose Manuel. He's so quick, uh, so quick and so close over to Hugo Rodriguez. But Boas could be uh, gaining two positions in one, like a Tesco meal deal, um, if he is able to sit back behind, be patient, and uh, pick up two drivers in one. Two drivers in one. Yeah. And Matthew's falling down the order. He's been pushed into the blue uh, paintings of the Paul Ricard circuit and he sits down. Yeah, he's been chuckling with um, set up his pistol, so he's probably, I don't know, did he see us in this? I'm not too sure. I think he might just got oversteer, something like that, just spawned basically onto the, the blue yeah, lines. Yeah, he's been struggling with the, the, the set up of the car, so. Seems like Semi K still cannot get past Attila just yet. He needs to use a little bit more oomph inside of his car. And I, I don't know. I mean, he's got that fight, that passion. Semi K to try and look for the overtake, but he doesn't exactly have more pace. I don't know if it's actually better than Attila's, um, which pains to say, really. But here's Boas into the back end. They go, look how close he is to the Merc. Hits the back just a tiny bit of me and dive down the inside here. No, I'm still just staying behind. Now that's side by side. Yeah, here we go again. Yeah, to the exit. Boas here has the better exit of the Mercedes. The Williams beating out the Mercedes onto the exit. Going into the first turn. He's just got the overtake done and dusted. Jose Manuel uh, can breathe a sigh of relief on the exit of that last turn because, of course, the deal rests down into turn one is so key. So that was a bit of a sigh of relief for the Haas car as Boas overtakes Hugo Rodriguez at eight of nine in the sprint race. Right, Sam's going to be using that ERS now. DRS is going to be enabled. This is the time now for Sam. Don't use too much of your ERS, so don't use too much down here. Yeah. yeah, look at the pace he's got uh, down on Attila. I mean, it's just not, it's, it's not enough for him. I don't think he seems like the, the risk is worth taking, really. He's still going to get really good points from this ra uh, sprint race, of course. Seven points is nothing to lose sleep over. Um, but... Nevertheless, of course, the one extra point is super key in any title fight, especially... And it's Rappi, he's going side by side with two McLarens, and SK is going to get involved Whoa. as well. They're free extra for the two... Yeah, two McLarens, and you've got SK on the inside. Yeah, SK down the inside, it's side by side with Rappi going into the progressive long right-hander. It looks like SK, rather being braver on the brake, is braver on the throttle. I was able to get the ex, uh, exit double dusted overtake on Adam Hun Lol as there were three oppressed going into the right hander. Then it was only SK and Rappi to have their business settled with. And now you can just see Terry K. Ha! Oh, look at his pace going down to turn one. He might have well, he might have lower wings. We're not too sure particularly, but here's what that pace doing down a straight, which is mostly down to ERS, mostly down to of course DRS. He's gonna have to absolutely dump. Is the rest down this straight? I think it's all or nothing. Really, this straight after that long progressive right hander is the really, really key straight in which you can get so many overtakes. You can't dump. You can't dump too much, so pistol, because otherwise you're going to not have enough for the final sector. If it has got, you know, he's not going to catch up. He's not going to catch up. And Attila, speaking of which, they yeah, pretty much got the exact same ERS usage for the both of them. Semi K. Canny on the final lap of the sprint race. It's a 1-2 for the Rebels so far in this sprint race. Uh, eight points for Attila, seven points for Semike. Both men in the battle for the championship standings will be super key if Semike can get the overtake on his teammate Attila. Will he look for it into the progressive? Right hander, no he doesn't. And a little bit of a wiggle inside uh, the, the middle of that turn. Into the left hander they go. Semike through the last few turns. Can he finally get the edge? Can he get an overtake on his teammate? His teammate pulls away from him in the last few turns. 
into the last turn we go. Silica, is he going to send it down here? No, he doesn't. Onto the exit. Why will it be a photo finish? DRS enabled. ERS enabled. Silica is getting so close, but he's too far away. Attila will come across the line to take the victory in the sprint race by only 800. Wow. And they say that France is boring. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I mean, it's what a sprint race. He's only the, one of the best that I, I've seen in quite some time. Just a mid nine laps, a mid nine laps of pure entertainment. I mean, like I said earlier, um, for Semi K, seven points is nothing to lose to leap over. Definitely well rewarded, well earned. And as you can see by details in terms of position gained, uh, he gained only one position, but that one position is enough to give him just an extra edge inside of the championship but, uh, fight. Also, Boas, I mean, he might not have even got any points from that sprint race. I actually did not know. I actually do not know. Um, also, Placky, is he racing tonight? I'm not too sure if he is or not. Uh, no, he's, he's not racing Boas. tonight. Did he leave the league or something? I think Boas got P5. Yeah, Boas got P5. So Boas got four points and Sem got seven. So at the moment, I think the gap is going to be 18 points between... Seven members, and then you've got Attila as well going to get involved. So this is going to be a really good battle pistol to see who's going to be, um, or who's going to get the points. Is it going to be Attila, Sem, or Bovers? Bovers will start P5 on the grid. Good uh, sprint from Podiakov. Wasn't really with anyone. He did get a penalty at the end, but it was enough to keep P3. Fourth is Manuel. Sixth, uh, Stefanko. Seventh, Hugo Rodriguez. Eighth, Adam. Ninth, SK missed out on, on the points. 10th, Mafio, 11th, Crooken, 12th, uh, Rappi, 13th, Shuddering, 14th, Joey, 15th, Adi Ferrari, 16th will be No Sense, and 17th will be um, S-Crack, um, another Russian driver that's joined us in the league. So it's good to have um, so many um, Russians uh, in, in in the race today. It's very, very interesting stuff. But yeah, Pistol, no formation lap, remember. So we're going straight back into the race action. Um, it's just action, action, action. Who knows? I don't know how they're going to do pistol the sprint shootout on the game. That's going to be pretty interesting to see that. Like, it might just be you do a one-shot qualifier and then a sprint, or one-shot qualifier and then a, another one-shot qualifying. I don't know. I don't know. Well, do you want to know what else will be interesting to see? Is um, how, we'll see how it's further Masters down, do it. or if the gap even is going to go further down, in terms of semi K versus Boas for the championship, eighteen points, 18 points. is the gap it's going the gap. into going in. the uh, obviously Grand Prix. But I tell you, also a twenty-two point gap between him and Boas going into the Grand Prix. I think it's, it's mostly mostly. I think Simi is probably going to be more focused on finishing ahead of his teammate rather than necessarily winning a Grand Prix. I think when you're battling with a guy for a championship, you want to make sure you just finish above him. Not necessarily if you want to win. Yeah, he's battling. Let's see if he can do that as it's by red light. Green light, go, go, go. Here in a 27 lapper in France in STB. Great start for Polyakov. As going into the first turn, it's side by side with Semi K. Can he get an overtake on the Manage 20, uh, sorry, who's 18 points behind the leader? Semi K's moved down two positions. Who's They've been on massive back the outside. Turn one. That's S crack. Well off the circuit there. He's had a mistake there. He's made a mistake in that first corner of install. And that's going to be very close. Um, for the midfield runners through this middle, Whoa, through this first sector. Oh, is round after a massive send down the inside into a right-hander. Not too sure who it was. I think it was an Alpine who did that. A very, very dangerous manoeuvre. So many cars have to cut the corner. But going wide onto it. And that's, that's a sight you don't particularly see in STB. You can just see how close, though, Hugo Rodriguez is getting over to Stefan. It looks like Mafia's going down the inside of Shadron, going into the right hander off the chicane. And look, it just pushed him a tiny little bit wide on there. On the exit, you can just see behind Ali Ferrari versus Rappi. And now look at Ali Ferrari. Look at the look at that exit that he's got. No sense. Has to forfeit the position. Look at Jose Manuel getting very close here to Polyakov up the field. Looks like the Ferrari still uh, is able to, or oh, a bit of a uh, wiggle on the exit there for Jose Manuel. Could have uh, potentially lost his car, gone round three position for Semi K. Speaking of a position and for Semi K, he's lost two positions off the start of this Grand Prix, something which uh, he probably would have dreaded. And there's uh, been a collision. 
there's been a collision. S crack got involved there at the back of the grid. There were three wide in that middle sector, and it just wasn't going to work. And now I think that's Rappy on the inside of Crooker coming through. Yep, and they're side by side going down the straight, side by side no longer. Crooken with the overtake, or re overtake, I'm actually not too sure, but Ali Forex sends it down the inside. On Joey, onto the exit of the second turn. Who's got the better of who? Joey's got the better of Ali Ferrari. But Ali Ferrari could come back in here. No, stays behind, almost bumping into the back of him, really. Very brave on those brakes, maybe a bit too brave, actually. It was this turn that they sent it, or someone sent it down the inside, which allowed or forced uh, Adam to go yeah. And Ali Ferrari's had a bit of a mistake there on the exit, and now he's got no sense behind him. He's going to have that slip stream down the straight. Oh, the wheel bang in there. You see a bit of contact with that front right and that rear left of both the AlphaTauri and the Aston Martin, but it seems like oh, a bit of a wobble on the exit there from Ali Ferrari. Just not finding his feet necessarily in this Grand Prix so far. Second lap out of 27 so far. So good for Attila, 25 points. Oh, you can just see Arsene Mike. he's so close. And down the inside he goes of Jose Manuel, almost connecting with uh, their front left to that rear right of, uh, of course, Jose Manuel. And almost connecting those two. That would have enabled for a spin for the Haas car. Into that half turn they go. No sense falling down the order. Can Semi K move up the order, down the inside. He sends it. On the Haskell, almost contact between the two of them, but it's not a brave or enough send to actually get the overtake. And Jose Manuel is able to escape it pretty easily. Uh, what have you thought of uh, Semi K's start so far, Maldi? Um, yeah, it's been a poor start for the Dutchman. He's not had um, a good start here in France. He's going to try and get past Manuel by Buddy Akov and all these guys. Um, but Attila is going to be vulnerable um, because of the DRS and shadows off the track. Yep, now he's coming back onto the track. RP not performing too well either. It's Rappi getting really close here to the Haas guys. He got to send it down the inside here. No, stays behind. Just see Boaz here. Of course, the man who's actually leading the championship whilst we focus on the people who's battling for the championship. We don't necessarily see the leader of it. Um, right now, he's just trying to keep that gap. Of course, he could become fatal and actually... Um, if he was able to not, well, if he got two points from this Grand Prix, by the way, Boas, Attila would be the championship leader by only a mere point. So Boas, there's a need for him to do well in this Grand Prix, and he's going to try and take the first step forward into doing that by potentially going down the inside on Hugo Rodriguez. Didn't get a good start. He started fifth. He's now in seventh. Could go up into sixth, but no. Can't send it up the inside into the progressive right-hander, into the short left one, though he's very eager to try and get past Hugo Rodriguez, uh, as it seems. Maybe he's just taking a tighter line through the turns. But I'm going to go down into the last turn very shortly. So Mikay's two turns behind, he sends it down the inside once more. Can he get the overtake? Oh, no, there's a little bit of a wheel bam. Maybe a bit uh, of a uh, generous dive bomb. Maybe not seen there by Jose Manuel. It's just very eager, Jose. Uh, sorry, so Mikay is to try and get past Jose. And, uh, well, Semi-K almost actually spammed because of it. Is there a, an urgency, a need for Semi-K to try and get past Jose Manuel? Or do you just think he's being a bit reckless for no reason, Maldi? Um, there is a need, yeah. Um, because he needs to get up to Attila. And, basically, he needs to beat Attila in this Grand Prix. And he needs to get well away from Boa. So, he needs to put his foot down. He needs to sort his shit out. He needs to get into P number four, because, uh, well, into P1, really, because uh, Pistol, if he gets these points, it will put him in a great position for this season, the closest to his home race. Next week, we go to Spa, um, and it's basically this season. Sem's home race, and s crack span. He's had an absolute mare of a time here in France tonight. Yeah, I mean, sprint race kind of uh, not just on at, at that, and really, it's proven to be true here in the Grand Prix. But there's not been too many action at the top. I just flicked on to uh, Matthew getting overtaken by Joey. It looks like Matthew will come straight back at him here. Look how close he is to the Alpine. Backs off going into the right-hander. Maybe he's looking for the better Rexit than Joey and maybe sending it down the inside into the left-hander. He's too far away to do so. Almost a second, by the way, between P1 Attila and P2 Polyakov. He's got that three-second time penalty as well. So do you think that uh, necessarily uh, German Polyakov... He's kind of getting in the way. Maybe his pace isn't as quick as Jose Manuel or, or Semike. And the fact he's there, do you think that he's slowing them down, Maldi? Um, it's 
pretty sure that Polyakov keep, stays in a tennis DRS. That's what you need to do, especially round this track. You've got a long uh, straight pistol. But Polyakov, he keeps cutting corners. He's going over curbs. He's, he's not got... He's not got the pace. But because he's still in this DRS with a tip out, Jose jo uh, jo and Sam can't, can't get through. Whoa! And Jose's Whoa! been a big mistake around that corner. Fuck me, hallelujah. And now Sam's going to be in the DRS overtake mode. Here we go down the straight. This is Sam's opportunity. He needs to get this move done very quickly. He's got this overtake. He's got the DRS. And Ferrari's made a mistake down back there. And um, Manuel keeps the position. Um, fucking hell, that, that must have been scary there for him. Yeah, I mean, he had like, it was like he was, he was slipping on an ice cube. Just, he literally could not get his car right. And, um, well, Simicare's going to have a look here. Here Down we go, he's got me this is crucial. Right -hander. Can he get the overtake? He's brave on that throttle, brave on the brakes, side by side, they've got contact onto the exit, pushes the Haskell wide, he's eager to send it down the inside again, on Simike. Oh no, Simike's round! And he's been tapped! Oh round. no, it's going to be fucking fuming! And so he gets Semi's going to be absolutely living in that cockpit. He's down into P8. And that's worthy of an oh my oh my moment because Jose Manuel has just spun Semi K on lap six out of 27. I can't believe it. Semi's going to be fucking livid. And it looks like Jose Manuel's gone wide actually on a different exit. He's got, I think he's got wing damage. Um, potentially he's losing two positions here. Surely he's got something affecting his car. No, it seems like he doesn't even have wing damage. Ali Ferrari's retired from the session. Is that going to cause a safety car? No, he's just going into the pit lane to retire. He's given up. Um, but you can just see how close uh, Hugo Rodriguez is to Stefan. Stefan's not going to get that DRS. The, the pace down this straight is going to be immense from Hugo Rodriguez. And here he comes. Look at that pace. Side by side with Aston Martin alongside. But now he's, of course, ahead. And Hugo Rodriguez gets the overtake on Stefan lap 6 of 27. Yeah, Sammy's going to be absolutely livid. Absolute fuming pistol. Um, but there's, there's action here, pistol, it's three wide. Boomers! Well, I mean, that is a very dangerous moment. By the way, remember, that if Boas gets a mere two points from this Grand Prix, he will move down to second place and Attila will overtake for P1. But you can Coming just inside. see Boas looking for the overtake on Jose Manuel for P5. Boas side by side, doesn't it? Side by side no longer. Jose Manuel is able to cut it off. Oh, no! Big moment between Jose Manuel and Boas. Almost sees Jose Manuel actually spin. He's getting absolutely mauled in this Grand Prix so far. And on to the exit of the last turn. He's had to forfeit his position. SK's looking to get an overtake here on Jose Manuel as well. Are they going to be side by side going into turn one? They are. The Haskar and the Alfa Romeo. Oh, never mind. They actually aren't. Uh, it looks like the Alfa Romeo actually backs out of it. There's, oh, look at the exit from Jose Manuel. He's just having such a tough time putting the throttle down. This invites Semiko to look for an overtake. And SK also overtakes Jose Manuel. But the question is, Semiko, of course, he's going to be mad at the fact that he spun him earlier. So do you think he's going to be really impatient with Jose Manuel? Yeah, or do you think... He's going to absolutely fume in his song. He's going to try and get the move done now. I've got a bit of lag on my screen, so... Well, I, I, I think um, Semi K's are all right for now. Well, Jose Manuel's all right for now. I'm not too sure if he's got any wing damage or not. Um, I don't think Semi he needs to um, go for the undercut. This is what Semi needs to do. He needs to go for the undercut now. That's what's going to get him this, this, these positions that he needs. Well, we oh. shall see. Um, Semi K is still behind. I don't mind granted only three tenths behind, but. Nevertheless, I mean, the, the, the pace that that Semi K has. Oh my, oh my, he's out of the Grand Prix, he's fucked it! He's down to P9, and now he's going to need to get over to take a bike quicker, and he's going to have very warm tyres here, but still. And now oh my also God. means currently Attila is in P1 in the standings because Boas has a bit two points, and the, and the gap. 25 points, it's 20, uh, I think, two or so. That's a three-point gap right now. 
Bowers only having two points, so it takes it down to only a one point gap, which means Attila is currently leading the championship due to a massive spin by Bowers. But now is the man semi here going to have a say in this? Is he going to look to rebuild himself after the spin that, that uh, you could say Jose Manuel has uh, caused? from the Red Bull, he's looking to try and gain some more points on Bowers, but right now, because of a massive spin from Bowers, currently Attila is leading the championship. Yeah, this is major, absolutely major. And you can just see that Semi K is on the hard set compound I don't think we actually go, I don't think we actually went through the strategy, so let's see. Looks like it's literally hard times for everyone. Um, so they're going all on the same, such the same strategy. So pretty much, unless people's going. Oh, now Semi K still got sorted in with Jose Manuel. Oh, almost contact again between the two of them. And Semi K maybe looking for around the outside. Maybe he's gonna switch back. No, he's staying behind. He just yeah, he kind of has to. Um, he, he will be eager. I think he's gonna send it down into the last turn. It's where he's put it down here a couple of times. I think he'll do it once more. No, stays behind. Is that DRS going to enable him to look for an overtake going down into turn one? Or is he still staying behind? No, still stays behind. But yeah, also Burns with a 2.3 seconds gap to Joey. Right now, Joey has that three second time penalty, which means actually Attila is not leaving the standings due to Burns actually being in P8, which gives him, of course, four points, which then means that uh, Bowers is leading the championship by a mere one point. Mafia with a three second time penalty. He did not have a good sprint race. He's not having a very good uh, Grand Prix in of itself. And right now, Bowers is still champion, but by only one insignificant point. Well, championship leader. We weren't a champion just yet. <laughs> Sorry. But, um,. We go SK with a three second time penalty. Loads of time penalties being dished out early on. We've got around 17 laps left to go of the French Grand Prix. And uh, well, this is the perfect time to plug in our socials. If um, you enjoy our racing content here in SDB, you can go ahead and follow us here on Twitch. You can follow us on YouTube and you can also follow us on TikTok, all with the same username, just SDB Racing League. Follow us, do us, do us uh, some good follows. Spread us out to some more viewers, which uh, deserve these kind of uh, well, this kind of entertainment. Yeah, uh, Pistol. I must say, it has been a much better race than Austria last week, which is mad to say, because a lot of people say, "Oh, France is boring." Oh, what are you racing at France for? But it has actually been a pretty good um, final race for Tier One round this track. Um, honestly, France is going to be missed. I remember the race, Pistol. You, you won't know, but um, it was a race. I can't remember what, what season it was. I think it was like either F1 2019 or F1 2020, and the safety car came out as rain was about to fall. It's probably a car has a little moment through that corner. Um, but yeah, rain was about to fall, Pistol, and basically the safety car was deployed, and the drivers. Um, some drivers picked for intermediate, some drivers picked for drivers, and it was, a, it was like literally a, a wet track pit stop on the safety car restart. And half the grid was on drivers and half the grid was on intermediates, and it was absolute chaos. And that is why France had to be on the calendar. We had to race here one final time because um, France is just banging, talking of banging. We've got Sam trying to get this move done on Justin Emmanuel as they come through. Oh, it's on the inside pistol. Oh, contact between the two of them. At least it was on my screen. But no, no, Jose Mamma has a big bubble on the exit. And now Semi K can finally sit in peace as now he is in P6. Cuts the corner though. Is that going to give him a time penalty? No, it isn't. Going into the last turn here, he doesn't necessarily need to overtake SK to be in P5. But he's going to need to overtake him to go into P4 if he is to, to get P4 very soon. Yeah, I've got a bit of lag on my game pistol, so. For me, it looks like these drivers are going off at every corner, so it's really difficult to follow, so please, please bear, with, bear with me. But in that race I was talking about Pistol before the uh, collision happened. Hopefully I'm not lagging in, in the party, by the way. Um, what happened is, is 
half the grid was on uh, was on uh, dry tyres, and the other half of the grid was on intermediates because the rain started falling like midway through safety car. So all these beer drivers were at the bottom of the grid, and it was just absolute chaos. It was crazy. I'll have to find it and and show some people. But talking about action at France, Sem's in the six stream on S K now. He's definitely the quicker driver compared. I think Pace so if Sen if Sen can clear these drivers, I think B2 is on the card still for him. Well Yakov has got a pen now. So this is crucial though. He gets past these drivers as quickly as possible. He's on the pace now. Purple in that second sector. Well the thing is for Semike, he's literally got no ERS. What's right? Switch! Oh, for the move. Move. What's what move? Semike, absolutely fantastic move! But there's still some on to the exit! The Alfa Romeo has to forfeit the position! What a switch back maneuver from Semike! And he's up into P5 in the Grand Prix! Absolutely fantastic! He needs to keep in his DRS, so he needs to keep in the DRS now. Next up is to Franco. Sem is on it here in France. Another man who is also on it is Boas. The amount of pace he's got on the exit here on Joey is undeniable, and he gets the overtake. And then Undusted going down into turn one. Joey is just hanging on by a thread. This is very key for Boas to potentially hack down that Jose Manuel, which then, of course, would enable him to get a nice little comfy gap to Attila in the championship. Yeah, Attila's um, very well in this race. He's definitely got that gap uh, up on Polyakov. But Polyakov, I don't think he still is on the same pace as Rodriguez, Defanco, Sem, SK. I mean, just look at... Uh, if you have telemetry on your screen, Maldi, just look at uh, Seneke's ERS, burns it all out, and then look at Stefan's. I mean, it's a massive difference. Massive difference. And, uh, uh, well, if that's the one thing I think Semike is going to lack in the later stage of the Grand Prix is that this ERS, he, he practically, in my opinion, he needs a safety car. And Jose Manuel has made a mistake. Joey's into P8, Bo is into P7. That's what I was just talking about a second ago. That now, because, or if Bo is, is in P8, which he is now, P7, sorry, then he has a comfortable gap to Attila finally in the standings, which is around that... Four points, I want to say. So, Bo is his champion now. Oh, sorry, not champion. Is the leader uh, of the championship standings by four or so points. Oh, and he's, he's coming into the pit lane. Is it time for people to come into the pit lane? Maybe looking for an yeah, undercut Bo's here. Yeah, Bo's going for that undercut. This is going to be crucial. Bo's going for the undercut. Well, there you go. Comes this, is what, this is what I'm going to do this still. You've got to pick very early. The undercut is very powerful around the circuit. Very fucking powerful. So you need to pit very early off these hard tyres. And you, I think you've got an Aston Martin coming as well. Unless that's just on my screen. But yeah, Bowers is away now. Set of mediums for the Williams. And he's going to go for a big, big undercut now. I, to be honest, look at the side note. I do quite like um, the, 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 the pit stop in France. It is quite... Um, quite um, most to look at, I, I believe. Just a little bit of a tangent, <laughs> and you can just see behind Stefan. And here comes Rodriguez going side by side into the chicane. Stefan around the outside has got a three second time penalty though, which means Hugo Rodriguez is still in P four, uh, sorry P three. Semi K, if he's able to overtake Hugo Rodriguez, he's in P two actually. So that's eighteen points. So it would be around sixteen points. Uh, sorry, six points. Um. Between uh, him and Bo is in the standings. Oh, big moments for the Aston Martin. The exit! Oh, and then Bo spun! Oh, oh my god! god. The Aston Bo spun! Oh my, oh my! I see. Uh, 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 Semi K is into P3. He's technically P2 P in the Grand Prix now. That's six second time penalty um, from uh, Polyakov. And what happened? I don't know if you saw it on your screen, Maldi, but Stefan had a massive football on the exit. The, the Aston Martin hit into the Mercedes by accident. Pure, pure unluck for the Mercedes, who then gone, went sideways and hit the rear right of Semi K. Uh, Semi K, I believe, is fine. I don't think he's got any damage on his car. He hasn't. Uh, just both the Mercedes and the Aston Martin just both spinning out of pure a luck uh, or, or a, a lack of luck.
Oh, listen, we have got the move done. On Stefanko and Hugo Rodriguez that are out very close to each other on the track still. Indeed, but Boris is out of the points right now, of course, with that. Um, uh, hold on. I think Semi K right now is level on points with Boris as they're in P2. So, uh, Attila is right now the championship leader, but to his teammate. And Boas are level on points for P2 right now. Let's see if Sam can get this uh, overtake done on German Podiakov here. This is going to be a pit stop. You need to think about pitting soon, Sam. Does, and he's in the pit lane. Just wants to make sure that he doesn't, uh, well, he isn't stupid and gets himself a five second time penalty for uh, being too quick in the pit lane, which he doesn't do. Peels into the pit lane. Boas is going to be compared to Boas. Boas is going to have a lot of grip on his on his uh, on his um his outlaps here. Yeah. And uh, no, he doesn't. Has someone span? Not too yeah, sure. Chadron span again. Sure. Chadron span again. Right. Let's see where Boas is compared to Semike. I think Boas will be ahead. Or no, he isn't. Um, Semike is P8, and and Chadron's out of the. French Grand Prix, um, I think, just retired in the pit lane, so there's no need for a safety car on track. Boas, with a 132.8, has the fastest lap of the Grand Prix so far. That's huge, because whilst he has two points right here, because of that uh, and fastest lap, he's actually level on points of the tiller for the championship standings oh, right Pistol, now. Pistol, you still got Rappi, and you still got the Jim McLaren to pit. Manuel still needs to pit. Joey still needs to pit. SK needs to pit, Podiakov needs to pit, and Attila does actually need to pit. So this could actually be a great undercut for Sem. If, he, if he's had a good uh, outlap here, um, this is going to be a she good little, um, yeah. oh, look good at little look undercut. He, he, he literally gained three tenths or so through just the chicane itself. He's, he's literally gaining a tenth on the straight right now. He's, he's really quick on these medium tyres already. So... The longer that Attila stays out for, the more time that Sam's going to gain on him uh, in this part of the race. And he's in clean air as well, so that's absolutely crucial for him. Indeed it is. And you can just see SK and P3 getting close, pretty much the closest car up top um, to one another. And SK pitting into the pit lane. Uh, of course, Sam K is going to be ahead. And Hun Law into the pit lane as well. Um... Matthew, uh, sorry, not Matthew, uh, Maldi, you, you often talk about the um, undercut, but what about an overcut on a trip like this? What would the driver expect? Uh, would they gain time? Would they lose time? What, what do you reckon? Um, I think Attila, Attila will get the overcut, definitely. He had, he had the gap. Uh, he'll still, you know, overcut is you're ahead when you've reversed some boxes, but when, they, when you've both pit, when you've both pitted, you're ahead. But what I'm looking at here, Pistol, the clouds are starting to form here in Poricar. They're starting to form now. So, um, this is interesting to me because this is now giving that race vibes. This is exactly what happened. This cloud started to form. By the way, if, you, if um, viewers on stream, if you're wondering why I'm flicking through the wood camera like this, it's just because I'm looking at the clouds. Um, just saying, Matthew's coming through on Adam Hullock. He's got those warmer tyres now. And Matthew's up to P11 in this Grand Prix. He's using those mediums, those fresh mediums. Right, Attila, Attila is in. The pit. So, Semi's teammates in the pits. This is crucial now. Let's see where Semi's on the track. I don't think he's going to be out ahead of his teammate, of course. But he will definitely try and use this advantage. You can see, you'll now see Pistol that his teammate is in the pits. So he'll be able to see this information on his on his screen. And now he's going to really push on down here. Um, he might actually get the overtake. No, he won't. Uh, he won't get the no. But Rappi is richly. Is Attila going to be? Is Attila going to be um, out? He's going to be behind Rappi here. This is crucial. This is absolutely crucial. You can see Sem has gained two point nine seconds. With this undercut, you can see that uh, pistol, and now he's going to have Rappi, who's on the who's on these worn hards ahead of him as well. He's going to have a lot of uh, um, poor grip, and Sam's got the TRS. 
that is extremely key, especially down the straight like this. Of course, the tiller is going to have um, those really worn out, well, not worn out, those really cold, medium tyres. So, of course, on the out lap, it's not going to be particularly too great for Attila. He's not going to be totally pushing like Simike is right now. Of course, Attila's got much more ERF, which I did say, and I did mention, oh, well, Jose Magmo, sorry, by the way, is so by so and Joey. Into the right hander they go. Into you can the see Attila, Attila right trying hander. to warm his tyres up, Pistol. Sorry, I'm really sorry to cut you off, but Attila is struggling on these cold tyres and Sem. Here we go. Yeah, Sam, look how close he is. Down the inside. He's he gone for the move. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, no, no. There was no way he was going to get that overtake. Way too ambitious. Uh, and, yeah, instantly you can just see the Tiller starts to pull away. But that battle with Joey and Jose and Manuel ended in Manuel getting the overtake. But Joey's going to come straight back at him here as Polyakov comes to the pit lane. Here we go. Here comes Joey. Oh, man, well, so by so going into the first turn. The uh, Al Alpine is braver on the brakes, onto the exits, gets the uh, manoeuvre sealed off, and he's up into P1 of the Grand Prix, but of course, very momentarily as he has to pit. Yeah, I'm um, a little bit. So he gave three second time oh. penalty! Oh, no! Fly it. That is huge. You're fucking lying. Well, actually, let me tell you something here. If Attila, oh, you can just see Rappi oh. in the uh, on the left hand side. I think letting those two go by, and he does. But if Attila does get uh. a three second time penalty, this is all to play for. And unless no uh. semi case, I would check the warnings. Spins. I would check the warnings, pistol. But you can't go on the race director in the sprint race. Yeah, it's so it's so annoying. Um. But we'll, 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 we'll see. We'll see. Uh, we'll I'm still going to give this a good go, Pistol. I'm still going to give this a good go. But looking just up ahead, Jose Manuel and Joey are still very close to each other. This is a great battle. But I don't think we've actually sung its praises about an unsung battle. Um, and oh, no, never mind. Jose Manuel, massive wobble on the exit. And uh, he's now having... Is Joey staying out know, again? Is there rain on the way? That, oh yeah, you can just see the clouds, by the way. Right now, it's almost directly there ahead. There must be rain coming, Pistol. There must be rain coming. Must be. There's no way you would say I that don't so see long. why Manuel and Joey would be out for 19 laps on hard tyres. Especially considering that they've both got six second time penalties. And yeah, and even Rappi continued for a few more laps as well. The sneak, so the rain is definitely on its way here in France. Oh, I'm, I'm sure of it. I'm sure of it. Rain is definitely coming here at Paul Ricard, but Sam is going to have this oh, DRS. Once again, and it's made a mistake, and Sam's up to make that P1. And that is a massive moment here in the French Grand Prix. But Attila's coming right back at him here. Attila, going to go, so oh, no. Oh, my word. Semi-K, what was that? I'm going to be honest, Semi-K. That was totally your fault. If Attila did go round or something like that, that would have definitely been a time penalty for you, Semi-K. That was very dirty right there. Just cuts him straight off whilst he was looking for a round the outside manoeuvre. That could have been fatal to one another's race. But Attila's going to come straight back at him here. Into the progressive long right hand. Uh, Joey's losing the position to Manuel up top. Let's flick to that! Let's side by side once more. Here, Joey versus Manuel. Side by side. And they're still side by side onto the exit. Manuel still sticking his nose in down the inside. He goes, oh no, they're both round. They're both round. They are both round. And it means that Attila's going to get an overtake. Seneke, Seneke's going to go, oh no, now Attila's round. Now Attila's round. Now Attila's round. Massive moment in the French Grand Prix. And now Did he Attila spin? Pistol, what down. happened? Did he spin? No, what happened was that Joey rejoined the track after getting spun uh, by Jose Manuel. And in doing so, spun Attila, which means right now, Seneke is free of any limiting fault by Attila. And right now, Seneke is winning the French Grand Prix. I need to put your foot down then for the pens. That is unbelievable. I mean, I say it so often. People think, that, oh, the time penalty is low. It's, it does nothing. But Tiller's going to try and get past SK here and does so. But what I was going to say was that people, when they, when they see, uh, of course, 
Oh, hold on. Right now, I think... No, technically Semi-K is still winning this Grand Prix, but as soon as that gap goes down to like six tenths or something, yeah, pretty much. Uh, Attila's winning the Grand Prix, and yep, he is winning the Grand Prix right now, Attila. And what's happening to Joey? Goes very wide there. And... Oh, he's got a punch out! Joey's got a punch out! Oh, yes! Look at that front right tyre punctures there for Joey. That's why he went wide. I was so confused as to why he did, and that's why... He's practically got three wheels to drive with as he will surely pull into the pit lane. By the way, Boas is P3 in this Grand Prix right now. So technically, if it was to stay the same, it wouldn't really do anything. And um, really, Boas would still be leading the championship. But nevertheless, there's still action to come soon. So potentially... But why did they go so long spin. then on the hards? I, I genuinely am not too sure. Maybe they just wanted to go to the end on them. Um, I I don't have a clue. Let me take out Joey here. Is he on to softs? Attila's made another mistake in SK and SK spins on the twenty first lap out of twenty seven, and that's not going to be Boyer Car in the place for SK as now Aston Martin of. Stefan is looking for the overtake, it's side by side, side by side no longer, and now you can just see Igor Rodriguez looking for an overtake, gets the overtake, and now he's looking for two for one, like a Tesco meal deal, no, uh, stay behind, he going into the chicane on the exit though, he's getting quite close to the Aston Martin, can he look for it it's round the outside, or the inside, <laughs> side by side going into the right hander, the Mercedes, can he get the overtake down the inside? He goes into the right-hander, into the progressive right-hander now. Who's brave on the brakes? Who's got the better exit? Let's see who gets the better exit. Who gets the brave on the brakes? And it looks like it's Stefan. He's brave on the brakes. Better on the exit. And he gets the overtake. It's actually, look at the Mercedes uh, coming Stefan right back at it. Mercedes going right back at it here. Hugo Rodriguez, side by side. And still they are making a little bit of contact. Going down into the last turn of the... Paul Ricard circuit, and now SK sending it down on the inside of the Mercedes on the exit, gets a better exit, gets the overtake. Hugo Rodriguez now looking to come straight back at him. SK, is it going to be falling fatal to the DRS? No, he isn't. And SK. Uh, Pistol, sorry. Um, it's actually Stefanko's birthday today, so. Um, ah. Yeah. Happy birthday, Stefan. Uh, Stefanko, boy, your car in the place. He's now very old. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, no, I'm only joking, Stefan. You have yourself a lovely day uh, on your birthday. If you spin in the next lap or so, that would be hilarious because I've just congratulated you. Happy birthday. That would be quite funny. Uh, so don't do that. Please don't do that. And he might lose a position here. The birthday boy he might lose a position to SK. No. Um. The birthday boy. <laughs> <laughs> And still, it's, it stood suck. But look at Attila. He's just about hovering around that three second zone. He's right now the winner. Of and Mafia has been hit in the back by Rafi. He's going to be fucking. He's going to be fuming. Rafi stops on the track there. He's going to be absolutely fuming. Everyone's going to be absolutely fuming in this race. As Mafia would put it, like he did in a different league when he raced in uh, Monza. Do you see what I'm dealing with here? Uh, so, uh, he's <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Yeah, I think Rappy Pistol just—I uh, was watching it. Rappy just got a little bit uh, too eager on the brakes, um, broke quite late compared to Mafia for the corner and just hit the back. So, yeah. Um, if you, uh, by the way, if you don't know um, why we're right. laughing at, at Mafia going, you see what I've done here, what I'm dealing with here. Just, just. Every Friday, just go on to his Twitch. It's just raw underscore it underscore mafia. Go over there, follow him, watch him. I think he's streaming this race right now. Um, any race he does, he streams. It's hilarious every single time. So, so please, please, we urge you on to, to, to go and, and watch those. Rappy into the pit lane uh, after taking out uh, Mafia. Someone span, it's SK. SK is out. Well, what happened to SK? Yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah, you completely yeah, he's spam. Yeah, he spam. He spam that. Jose Manuel gets another take, and oh, he spun! And that's the massive moment for the Haskar. Matthew comes through for P9. But you could just see Attila is edging closer, but he's still around three seconds off. He kind of, he kind of dips into the three seconds, but then 
Sometimes he's, he's 2 point, sorry, he's 3.1, 3.05, something like that, uh, into Sector 2. So I'm not too sure if he'll actually win this Grand Prix or not. Nevertheless, it doesn't necessarily change the fact that Boas, at the end of this race, if he is to finish like this, of course, would still be leading the championship. But what a race so far in France. Yeah, it's been a lot of action, this so. I think a race that you would definitely prefer than last week's Austrian Grand Prix. Um, I think uh, you've been a lot more positive tonight, so that's good. Uh, Joey has made a mistake. He's off the track. He's spam. Yep, and Joey on the white lines. That's uh, he's gonna he's gonna redraw the track now. Not good for him. He's P13. Yeah, those tires are gonna be warm. Not what you want to see. But like I said, Attila 3.1 is the gap now. And it's just out of nowhere, and Sunny has just somehow found this absolutely fantastic pace, and he's just using it to all of his use. Attila, I'm not too sure if he's got, if he's got two warnings or whatever, but pretty much, I'm going to be stalking him for these last few laps, in case if he does make a mistake, in case if he does uh, actually get a three-second time penalty, because of course, if he do, 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 does do that, then he'll drop down to P3, lose actually points, crucial points to Boas. <laughs> So we'll see what happens right at the end of this French Grand Prix. Yeah, he seems to be losing the back end, but something that Attila will be thinking about as well, uh, Stem hitting a, a lot, um, you know, earlier than his teammates. So Attila's going to have the, the grip that's going to come to him now in these final stages of the race. Bogazo is um, looking quite quick as well, so... Um, it's all to play for, but Bobo's at the moment um, could well win this race, Pistol. If he can overtake Attila and then get the gap down to Stem, we could be seeing Bobo's on the top step. So it's anyone's anyone's race at the moment. It's the near margins here in France. Well, of course, if Bowers and Attila does battle for quite a long time, then that, of course, will create like at least a five-tenth gap, which would be very difficult to, to pull down. I think Boris is all do uh, or die for the last few laps, really. Also, so, Pistol, Sam's very good in the first sector. That's where he gains his time. You can see that. It's now 3.2. He definitely gains that time in Jose the first Manuel sector. And... is out of the French Grand Prix. Oh, he's retired in the pit lane. I thought he just like, crashed out or something, but no. He uh, retires in the pit lane. Apologies to cut you off. And Jose Manuel, after actually having a really good position in the Grand Prix, P3, P2, then spins with Semi K. He's now down to P12. He's retired. He says, I've had enough. Yeah. Well, this race pistol is going to go to the very end. Who's going to win? Is it going to be Sam or is it going to be Attila? I mean, just like a, a few rounds ago, you said, oh, it's very key that, that Sammy K wins this race and stuff like that to close the gap down. And in the back of my head, I'm always like, what is this guy talking about? Because Sammy K is like 50 points away from P1 in the standings. But of course, now he's 18 points away from the standings. No, um, he's not pistol. Oh, a few rounds. Sorry, 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 sorry. I thought you meant like tonight. I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> but um, no, eighteen points. The gap after that uh, second place. I'm just trying to think. Eighteen points. He gained eighty points. So pretty much, if he's P two, nevertheless, he'll gain three points on Boas, which is still nothing to scoff at. Um, so that that's that's still very good for Semi K. But very soon. We'll tick by into the 27th lap. Who's going to win? Is it going to be Boas, Attila or Simike? We will find out. Very but Attila's soon. got a lot more ERS to play with. So he's going he's gonna to really use that down well, on the final lap to try and get the gap down pistol. And of course, the ERS is very powerful, especially around this track. You've got two long straights as well. Separated by Chicane, but Attila is losing time. Sam's pushing that car hard here, pistol. He wants this win here in France. He knows if he wins this race, uh, yeah, if he wins this race, um, he has, well, really got a got close to the championship. He's also missing the USA Grand Prix as well, Pistol. So um, it is absolutely crucial that he gets these points in France, Belgium, and Monza. We go to Belgium next week. His home race. Well, he's from Netherlands, but he's on the ball there. Well, so that's it. Right now. Uh, I would not say to cut you off, but if he is to win this race, 
there is only eight points, the gap between him and Boas for the championship. It's now, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, it is now the last lap of the French Grand Prix. Attila is he's still stuck in P2, really. There's there's no Boas P3s. What's up? Oh, it's a three second time penalty. That's changed everything. Attila's got a three second time penalty. And now, surely it's a victory for Semi K. He will now try and bask through his own glory as he will swiftly twist and turn his car round the track in Paul Ricard through each and every single turn. He gains more and more time without a care in the world. This man got spun very early. Oh, he's lost for words absolutely fucking lost for words Sam had it in the bag Attila had a penalty all he had to do was get it through the chicane well, well I mean that is just number I mean, I'll tell you one thing for certain Maldi that's definitely going on my TikTok what a, I mean that is unbelievable but I've never seen anything like that just, I mean, I was doing my, my poetry and I was like, oh, this is going to be an easy win for Semi K. He'll come around the last turns. Easy. Job done. He's going to be eight points, the gap to Boas. That's clearly changed. And it's going to be around 30 points going into Circuit Americas, which, of course, he won't even attend. That's astonishing. Unbelievable. No, next week. No, Pistol, next week is Spa. Ah, Spa, sorry. But... How on earth has Scrap got driving today? I'll never know, but... I... I... I can't... I... I just... Eh? Eh? It's ridiculous. That is ridiculous. I just, like... I just, like... Of course, I'm happy for Boas, but we, we, were, we all, of course, would love to see a fantastic championship battle when, when something like that happens to Semi K. There's just no way around it. It does hurt. The Williams, though, steps on the top of the podium, takes the victory in France. And he takes home 25 points to extend his gap in the leaderboard. This is this was a pivotal race. If he is, I mean, if he's going to win the championship in the future, this is the race to look back on and say this was the moment that he finally won the championship. And over the weekend, he was the man who took most points. But 
uh, in the racing of itself, which I will go through, this is how it all turned out. Bowers, P1 in the standings, Attila, P2, Poliaco, P3, Sinekea, P4, uh, Stefan Co, P5, Hugo oh. Rodriguez, P6, Adam Hanlow, P7, SK, P8, Scrap, P9, Crocken, P10, Joey, P11, Mafia, P12, uh, Jose, Manuel, P13, It's Rappy, P14, Shannon, P15, No P16, and Ali Ferrari in P17. Uh, a shocking Grand Prix, to say the least, but a race which Bowers will happily look back on if he is to win the championship. Here in Paul Ricard, <laughs> drama to lead on to Spa next week. Wow. wow. Yes, thank you, Pistol. Um, yes, everyone, you can join us uh, tomorrow, Matt, for Tier 2 France, which is going to be probably even more chaotic and more action-packed than it was uh, tonight. Um, you can then join us next week no, join us Wednesday. You can join Pistol at Mafio on Wednesday for France uh, Tier 3. But if you don't want to watch them, you can always join us next week, Monday, for the Belgian Grand Prix. We return to the Spa Francochon circuit in Spa Francochon, uh, Belgium, for round 12, the Belgian Grand Prix. We'll see you then.